Today's show brought to you by West County Gardner. Oh, I love these people. Still looking for that perfect Mother's Day gift? Well, look no further than westcountygardener.com. West County Gardener has premium gardening work gloves that are perfect for every season and task. From working the flower bed to landscaping the yard. Plus, please pay attention to this part. They're all made from recycled water bottles. Yeah, I know. I'm so excited about these people and what they're doing with the demon discarded water bottle that litters this earth. If you take a photograph of yourself ordering their, their gloves and send it to me at kpcsfanmail at gmail.com, I will autograph a recycled photograph of me as an actor, one of those actors, 8 by 10s Yeah, I'll autograph it to your name and mail it to you at my own cost. That's how much I love West County Gardener. From now until Mother's Day, you'll also get 20% off your entire purchase using the promo code CHATSHOW. Please, folks, check out westcountygardener.com, promo code CHATSHOW at checkout for 20% off your entire order. Take that photo, email it to me, and get my photo autographed to you. Love, West County Gardener. Welcome back to Kevin Pollock's Chat Show. I am, as always, Chat Show. Hey, why hold the mug like that? I've got my reasons. It broke in three places. There are three left on the planet, and I have to order them in hundreds. So I'm afraid to hold. Hi, how are you? It's been a while. Uh, I've missed you horribly. Uh, you don't write, you don't call. What the fuck? In case you wanted to write, kpcsfanmail at gmail.com. You heard me, you son of a bitch. Sammy! Hey, buddy. How's it going? It's great. Yeah? Yeah, why not? Well, You've that's got... so great. He just informed me that he for not only forgot to go to the bathroom just now, but for the past two days. Thank forgot. You. Yeah. I'm not... going to go back to the top. Your mic is not. Fantastic. You know... Do someone want to take these, yeah, maybe? I'll take them. We were in a tight ship here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God this is the one we're not streaming live. <laughs> So it's on me now to check whether my mic is on. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! That only took 292 episodes. Oh, it's happened before. Right. Can the monkey light himself, uh, mic himself once? Help yourself okay. whatever, of course. Of course. course. Uh, right. So it's 40 seconds. Huh? Great. You know that joke, I forgot to go to the bathroom before the Welcome back once again to Kevin Pollock's Chat Show. I am, as always, Chat Show. How are you? Good. How are you? How are you? I, I asked a question. I'm waiting for an answer. Oh, no, the Tom Cruise pen. <laughs> <laughs> I've broken. Luckily, there's two. Yeah. Jamie and Sammy, hi, guys. Hey, hi. Kev. It's been too long. It really has. I feel like forever since I've been in this cockpit was the last one... Pete Holmes? Is that possible? It was before the new year. Yeah. Before the holidays, maybe. Before the holiday. Yeah. Yeah. Have you and all we're recovered? already into February. It's ridiculous. Tomorrow is I'm the big... I'm uh, 35 now. You're 35 now. Yeah. You've aged a bundle. I know. <laughs> Since last we were on the uh, camera. Yeah. Um, we come to you live, as always, from the West Side Comedy Theater. Some of the best improv sketch and stand-up comedy in the greater Los Angeles area. I thought area. you were going to say some of the best improvisers are walking in right now, Sean Boylan. <laughs> <laughs> Joe and Greer earlier. Yeah. 
We, we are getting some, uh, some gentle reminders that the room is only ours for the next 41 minutes. Since you, you did mention that we are streaming live, how about that uh, football game last Sunday, huh? Wow. What about the Super Bowl? Could you wow, believe? Wow, wow, wow. The big game. No, you it's, to say the big it's, game. it's after the fact. We can call it that now. No one is going to sue. We are not yeah. Fox. That's yeah. what I'm saying. How about it? How about that big game? The sporting-related uh, athletic-shaped pigskin. <laughs> yeah. Game. How about that outcome, huh? Wow. Did you see that coming? I did, actually. I you did? A bundle. Wow. Yeah. I was surprised. I want a bundle because um, I, uh, I finally figured out just before the holidays, time travel. Oh. I don't know if I mentioned that. <laughs> you know, you, you forgot to. <laughs> so, so what I do is I just go forward to uh, a big game. Yep. And I uh, find out the outcomes, yep. and then I go back. This is the plot oh. of Back to the Future Part 2. That is correct. <laughs> Just gambling? Well, it's well, a key plot point. I only time travel for gambling. I thought I was trying to make that clear. Yeah, I'm not interested in doing anything with Hitler. Oh, no. Or, no, no, no. Trump. A sports almanac. Strictly for gambling yeah. purposes. Yeah. Yep. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Kev so I'm very pleased with the outcome. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, the, the, the line really didn't change. It was open at three and stayed at three. Which, for a team like New England to have the year that it did, to stay yeah. at three is almost like the book saying, eh, pick them. It's like a home game. I guess. Know? Yeah. But, but, but based on that outcome, we, they knew what they were doing. Clearly, as always, bookmakers. How do they? I don't know. <laughs> um, hey, Sam, you want to hear about some upcoming guests? You know I do. I reached out around the holidays uh, also to, uh, to rebook some folks. Oh. Welcome back. We're coming up on eight years. Yeah. Welcome back. Very few repeats. Very few. Like three in yeah. eight years. How about these upcoming? Rob Riggle, Stephen Rue, Christopher Guest, Jason Alexander, David Couillet, J.K. Simmons, Kevin Nealon, Fred Savage, and Lauren Graham. You reached out to all of them. They're all confirmed. No. Yes. I don't believe it. Well, it's true. I'll give you the dates, but there's no reason to mention them now. No, that's definitely that's yeah. true. Well, uh, follow us on the, on the Twitter to find out the specific dates. I think next weekend is uh, the Stephen Root and the uh, Rob Riggle. Pretty sure. Same show? A twofer. We'll do separates. Wow. Kevin's yeah. banking him now. Banking. And he wants his time off. I understand. <laughs> yeah. It took me eight years to figure out. You know, we started by doing two episodes. And he only day. has to pay the crew once. He's, figured, he's viewed it real good. Wow. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Welcome back to Kike and a Bike. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so those are upcoming shows. Write to us again, kpcsfanmail at gmail.com. Uh, subscribe to us on the YouTube. And watch us and listen to us on the ear wolf. You can't watch us on the ear wolf. You can try. You can stare at your dial. Is there a thing? Is that a the dial? dial? Is that still a thing? <laughs> on the computer? <laughs> dial. <laughs> Every now and then I like to pretend it's 1940. Sure. Why not? Kids are like this at the radio. <laughs> <laughs> and all the pictures. Uh, I, I saw a Christmas story. Um, <laughs> All right, so let's just jump in to this particular show. Very excited to have the, both of these gentlemen. We've, we realized uh, as a crew, uh, through much panic, we had not had two guests at the table at this venue. Once again, thanking the Westside Comedy Theater. Uh, check out their calendar, westsidecomedy.com, I believe. I may be wrong. That's correct. That is correct. And look, signage. Um, <laughs> for upcoming shows and what have you. So so since we moved here almost two years ago, I think, we've not had... I think a little. We, Sam and I think longer. We've not had a years. double at the table. We had many back what in the day. What is it, Jason? Like two and a half now. See? Mm. Let me just look up under no minute. Gives a shit. Hold on. Let <laughs> me <laughs> get those three seconds back. Mm. Uh, my guests today are uh, uh, the host of a uh, award-winning podcast. <laughs> uh, wildly popular. I've appeared on it twice. Uh, appeared again staring at your dial. Uh, I'm so excited to have both of you. Uh, I'm not sure which one to introduce first. Do you guys have a pecking order? We don't. You don't? We don't. Mm -mm. I'm just going to go. Dealer's choice. Okay, I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to go Hebrew writing. <laughs> Graham Elwood, Chris Mancini. Yeah. Comedy film nerds. Yeah, this is it. Mm -hmm. um, welcome, guys. Long overdue. Yeah. Great to be here. It must be. Now let me ask you. <laughs> so so I I found this show on my dial and my yeah. iTunes dial uh -huh. and it was like I had to hold it up to the window to right. get a good reception. And just so you know that dial, don't touch it. No. Yeah. yeah. You oh. have to leave it alone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't touch it. And uh, get a cousin to be the rabbit ears. I always recommend. <laughs> I listen to How? your guys' show on my Zune. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> nice. 
<laughs> yep, we've been showing some movies on Kinescope. It's been a very exciting oh, sure. time, you know? Um, before we get to the, uh, the wonderful documentary that you made about podcasting that we refuse to be a part of personally, <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that in just a few moments. Um, I sent out an email to my crew who are so good. You know, the Jason McIntyre does a great uh, job at the research. Mm -hmm. J-Mac. J-Mac. I was saying boo words. Yeah, I said, uh, we've got two guests on uh, with Graham and Chris. And he, of course, sent me an amazingly long dossier uh, just on Graham. So <laughs> what I thought we would do to, to take full advantage of this well, beautiful it's, snafu. It's a problem. Yeah. If it was in January, it would have been okay, because right. he took January off, but now we're into February, so he's, you know. Yeah. Seems like you're making a drinking motion. He's back on the phone. Oh, I see. Hey. Wow. My dossier has been redacted. Well, so. Chris is in some legal trouble. We yeah. can say that. But, can but, just... but it, it provided, I believe, the potentiality for something uh, humorously enjoyable. So here's what we're going to do. Chris, for every fact I have on Graham, right. I will ask you to match it from your own life. <laughs> <laughs> for every mistaken fact that I have on Graham, I will ask you to match an equally mistaken fact from your own life. Okay? Uh, while claiming to be a die How many times? How, how much? Oh, I thought this was like a game show. You have 60 seconds on the clock. <laughs> Questions are worth 50 points. You know what? To make you feel at home with your rampant competitiveness, yeah. let's go ahead and put 30 seconds on the clock. <laughs> <laughs> uh, first question for Chris. While claiming to be a die-hard, lifelong Chicago Cub fan, he's originally from Madison, Wisconsin, where he resided to, uh, to the uh, rather youthful adult age of 12. And you? Pass. <laughs> the correct answer. We've already got a winner. What do we have for him, Sammy? Uh, we have a copy of Earbuds. The oh! That's from fantastic. Dicker and Dicker of Beverly Hills. Nebraska. Oh, nice. <laughs> um, so, so you were born in... I was born in um, Havertown, Pennsylvania. Correct. And, um, <laughs> now, give me Havertown yes. on the big Pennsylvania map, because it's a biggie. Are you closer yes. to Philly or Pittsburgh? Closer to Philly. Okay. And uh, then I went to school in Philadelphia. Sure you did. Film school at Temple University. And then I was doing stand-up in college. Well, and then I came to L.A. and I decided to seek my fortune. Sure. And 25 years later, everything's the same. Sure, sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, seeking, still the key word. Yes. Yeah, Fortune yeah. and glory, Kim. For all of yes. us. Fortune and glory. Fortune and glory. Temple University. Yes. What famous rapist went there? Um, uh, was it Rapey McRaperson? Now, now, wait a minute. Oh. Alleged degree. <laughs> <laughs> he got a PE it was, degree. It was, it was an honorary degree. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He didn't oh, really. man, oh, man, oh, man. You know what's weird? Not in the promos anymore. No? No. That's For the weird. university? Yeah. Bill Cosby's not in the yeah. temple. Uh, Isn't that, weird? that is odd. He's not in the alumni newsletters anymore? Because he or gave or a lot there. of money there. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, took from some of the women from there. <laughs> yeah, he gave you money. Know, that old thing, no press is bad press. Mm, Until some of yeah. <laughs> Satan comes to town. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, Graham's favorite game show as a child was Card Sharks. Yours? Press your luck. Correct. How does he know all these? <laughs> uh, first, Graham, uh, tell me about the, uh, the, the, the connection to the Chicago Cubs. Did it start when you were in the Wisconsin? Uh, it did not start when I was in the Wisconsin. Thank you for not lying. I, I, um, yeah, I'm not going to say I was Cubs all the way. I was a member of the Brewer Pepsi fan club as a child. Sure. Go watch the Milwaukee Brewers. But that was an arduous task. It was an hour and a half drive to Milwaukee. What was the Pepsi tie-in? Um, sponsored by? Sponsored by. Sure. Um, so when I, we moved to Chicago, I loved the fact that I could take the train to Wrigley. And so I was just starting at that age when my parents, well, mom, my parents were divorced. Thanks. Um, Age nine, I believe. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Let's go back there soon, shall we? Wow. <laughs> the dossier. Yeah, I've got too much. Okay, you've got yeah. way too much. Not on you. <laughs> yeah. Too much on you. Um, money well spent. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I. That, that, you got, yeah, how much money did you spend on this? <laughs> uh, so, yeah, then I could take the train and would go to Wrigley, and then I, I sort of fell in love with the Cubs. What age were you on the train to Wrigley? The first time I went there, I was 12 years old. What a time, now what you a have wonderful... Now Graham on the train. We do, it. <laughs> yeah. we do, let's go to it now. It's in black and white. I hope that's okay. Uh, we'll just take a little break for the... Uh, good. Um, so you could put a 12-year-old on a train. 
Say, when you have your responsible parents, yeah, yeah, absolutely, you can. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Responsible also. We're putting kids on a train. Well, time. I think is my parents were sort of of the mindset. They were like the '70s, and so they came from the very strict parenting. So they were like, we're going to be hippie. Sure. And for better, for worse, like they took us. We were living in Germany for a year as a kid. My dad had a Fulbright, a research scholarship. He was a college professor. And at age six, they took me to and my brother and sisters to see Dachau, which I think is a fine age to take. Age a, six. Six. Yeah. yeah. You want to soak that in at an early age. Yeah. So it's Get like. those scars are coming. Yeah. So that's why I'm a comedian. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, what else are you going to do? Uh, once you see ovens for people, you might as well tell jokes. <laughs> That's right. Uh, so, yeah. Natural transition. I think that was a lot of it. They just sort of were kind of, and then my, we moved there. My mom was a single parent working, and it was just sort of like, they kind of did this a lot. They, we were riding public transportation in Munich, Germany. Like, my sister was 14. She was the oldest, taking all of us on the, so they would just sort of like, go out there and figure it out yourself. And did you? Yeah, that's why I'm in podcasting. <laughs> but did you feel like you, that freedom was something you were aware of? Or you just thought every kid's got this? Uh, that's the thing. Looking back, it's like, what the fuck? But at the time... At the time, I was like, well, this is kind of cool. I mean, I guess at the time, I sort of took it for granted because other friends of mine, parents were like, no way. I'd be like, oh, God, your parents, what's their problem? Yeah, such tight asses. Yeah, and so, I don't know. It was kind of, I did kind of have a lot of freedom. Looking back... I maybe wish there was a little more structure. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> but looking back, though, that's why I see at the time, it's only in retrospect, I think, that we start to think, what the fuck was their problem? So the question was, at the time, did you know these scars were being applied? <laughs> <laughs> Partially. Yeah, yeah, sure. But then it was also like, uh, it, was, it was cool. Like, they took me to a lot of R-rated movies as a kid. I think it helped me understand, like, it helped comedy film nerds. Clockwork Orange around 10 years old? Yeah. Absolutely. Apocalypse Now? I sure. Mean, <laughs> eight. You know, like, uh, really Amityville Horror I remember going to. Yeah, in your dossier actually was a devotion to the Amityville Horror because there were some houses kind of in the neighborhood that might have reminded you of that particular house that maybe you had to run past. Okay, I'm not comfortable with all this, this, this information. <laughs> See? Nailed it on the yes. ones, J-Mac. Just nailed it to the point of Graham is uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and, and there actually were uh, that had that, I guess it would be a Cape Cod or something. I don't know what sure. that, 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 those two. Very specific windows. Windows that were the eyes that flared up in Amityville Horror. So there was a couple houses in my neighborhood like that that I would run past. <laughs> In the middle of the day. Yeah, because you thought the house was going to get you. Yeah, yeah well, yeah. and I was right. But and the L in Chicago, no problem. <laughs> no, no, just Not writing the White idea. Sox games. We took it to the south side of Chicago. Here on vacation. Here Never on vacation. A <laughs> Never a problem. Uh, now, Chris. Yes. Uh, in the Haverbrook, Pennsylvania, which I'm going to call it from now on. Not a real city. Not nope. North Haverbrook. Not yes. North Haverbrook. They have a monorail there. Uh, <laughs> there's a monorail and there never was. <laughs> well, like a Disney-style monorail? Yeah. Like, <laughs> okay. It's a Simpsons reference. It's right. a Simpsons reference. What kind of uh, freedom was happening in the Mancini family? Um, it was a little more restrictive. Sure. I would say. And, uh, I, the bar was so low, yeah, I, I don't I, know how we... I would say also I don't remember being taken to any uh, worldwide horrific historical sites. No? Um, we did go what, to Disneyland, Disney World. You guys didn't go to like the Idi Amin uh, theme park or anything? So... Nice. Uh, <laughs> oh, that closed. Um, yeah. They, For obvious They tried reasons. to build one next to Hershey. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, you, know, you see where the chocolate's made. Oh. Um, Pol Pot kisses. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so um, it was more a suburban kind of thing. Both uh, my parents were teachers, and uh, my favorite thing my dad would always say is, "Well, we're upper middle class." And it's like, "Well, we're not middle class. No, we're upper middle class," which is a term I've never heard before or after. No, because it never really existed for like yes. a day. Yeah. Did uh, were they professors or high school teachers? Or? My um, my mom taught um, little kids, and my dad was a professor at a uh, community college. By little kids, you mean little people kids? Yes, little people kids. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like preschool. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And your dad say again? He was a uh, professor at a, a community college. Uh, professor at a community kids. college, mm -hmm. and I love that to him that was upper middle class. Yes, that's spectacular. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, he had tenure um, for years and years and years that they don't give away anymore, and they realized that they could hire three teachers for what they were paying him. Sure, and they did. Yeah, eventually. Wow. 
Uh, a little, so not quite as much freedom necessarily. There's no, it was pretty much suburban freedom. That was it. Uh, and you know, we didn't do a lot of traveling. It was like when you live in Pennsylvania, it's like oh, Jersey Shore. That's about as far as you're gonna go. Which is kind of like Dachau. Yeah. I mean, let's let's be clear. <laughs> it's, you know, Sister cities. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, um, and, uh, and and then like let's set the, the show <laughs> Jersey Shore <laughs> in Dachau and just see how that'll. So yeah. The German equivalent of the situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's something I need to see at some point. Um, I think the, you know, the scariest thing was maybe going through the heart at the Franklin Institute. That was the, uh, that was, Although I'm going to say yeah. suburban freedom, not yes. a bad name for an improv group. Yes. Um, well, I'm from Western Pennsylvania, and my, there was a, a short period when my mother was obsessed with touring, like, abandoned penitentiaries. Oh, so that, I guess that kind of fits. That's Our kind of sexy. parents should get yeah. together. <laughs> yeah, that's a cool thing to be obsessed with. Yeah, but there was like, yeah, there was, um, I guess this, there was like two or three of them that we went to. Like, like what visit. happens the day before that happens? Like, and you know what this was too? This is odd. It was always like a Sunday outing. It was like we're gonna go, we're gonna drive to the West Virginia State Penitentiary and like go to go tour it on, on Sunday. Wow. wow, you kids want to hear the, the horror <laughs> screams that come out of the walls? <laughs> yeah. It'll be fantastic. Yeah, I, well, I'll, I'll, you know, Alcatraz has been a, tour, right. a tourist exactly. attraction forever. Yeah. What's the difference? Well, before it was a prison, it was a weapon stronghold. <laughs> I've been on the Alcatraz tour, guys. Oh, wow. <laughs> and were you six when you went on that tour? No, I was oh. in my 30s. Okay. <laughs> the difference is he retained the information. Right. Yeah, that was, I just visually saw the offals of man that yeah. I kept with me at every night that I sleep until this age. <laughs> uh, Chris. <laughs> Graham was so intensely competitive as a young man that once, while playing Monopoly with a group of close friends, became so enraged that he, quote, fucking chucked the board across the room. Not unlike college basketball coach and infamously ill-tempered Bobby Knight. All so, right, so he works for the NSA. <laughs> Let's just be clear on that. This is an NSA thing. <laughs> These are things that I don't even know. I've been working with them for years. <laughs> Did you ever chuck a Monopoly board while playing with friends? I didn't. Um, it was more. Weird. It was more a twenty-sided die. Ah. Um, oh, during, ye old. Well, yeah. You know, something happens to your elf during a D and D session. You know, you can't take it lying down. The die got to fly. So the die got to fly. <laughs> gotcha. Ah <laughs> uh, ha ha. Uh, so Graham, you want to weigh in at all on the truck and the board? Uh, yeah, you want to fucking, this is real estate. It's not fun. It's, uh, this is a real estate game. It's not an easy game. You know, if you paid attention a little more, you might be the president of the United States. You might be a, uh... No, no, if I had a millionaire dad that was, gave me just trust funds and then I got six bankruptcies because the system is written by rich people, then I would be the president of the United States. We're going to start there? Correct. Yeah. <laughs> the foundation yes. of trouble? You know, I don't know if that's true, but let's just say it wouldn't hurt. Yeah. <laughs> um, I will say this. Yes. In all seriousness, yes, I was hyper competitive. I don't look back on those moments and. With any sense of pride? No. Uh huh. No. That's why we bring it up on a comedy show. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Did it happen with other games too, like Perfection, and like? No, it was literally. And ladders. It was. <laughs> it was Monopoly. I very much loved that game. And when I would lose, I would get... I was an angry guy in his 20s. I mean, in my 20s, I was pretty angry. That's when this happened. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Billy Joel wrote that song about you. Is it wrong of me to picture the money going up in the air in slow motion? I lost Scorsese. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then the board's kind of flipping, and yeah. you see like a how, uh, like one of the... And the guy who had the most properties, no! Yeah. And there's like a hotel that kind of hits a guy in the yeah. temple. And, uh -huh. yeah. I like all of that. Yeah. Why aren't we filming that? Um... Chris, drawn to performing early. Yes. Graham was on stage by age four and did a TV commercial for a famous footwear in which he held up a pair of Pumas sporting a, quote, bowl cut and beautifully articulated the line, I like these. <laughs> <laughs> Can we go to the tape? <laughs> yes. Once if again, if anyone finds that tape, I want to put it on my Let's reel. Take a moment uh, to 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 go around your YouTube dial <laughs> and find the Puma commercial from what year? This would be 1978. Mm -hmm. And I got made fun of at school. Sure. Which was good. Helpful. Yeah. You, did you flash the check at him? No, you didn't see that because I went right to the. Oh yeah. Folks. The folks took the. <laughs> no, I actually got to open up a savings account. I got paid. I don't know. 
three hundred bucks or something, and I opened up a savings account. Uh huh. And to this day, it is worth forty million dollars. <laughs> 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 Do uh, how early did you get the bug? Because this one at four is on the stage. Hey, look at me. Uh, it was probably later. Um, I did a lot of writing, and that was sure. really the thing that really um, attracted me to. What are you writing it for? Me. So, I'm, I'm, um, dear diary, um, schematics. Let's not get into it more than that. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I was uh, always stories. It was always stories. I would start um, early and just. Um, I would always do get really good grades in English for storytelling and story writing. Did and the folks put that in you uh, at all? No, it was just something I, I really. Cool. wanted to do yeah From and, and I, you were actually inspired by I was and I read all the time it was if it was a comic book a book and I was always in the library and it was always reading and writing would be the things that I would do all the time and then um, when I started in college I started managing a, a comedy club uh, at a place that's no longer there in, in Pennsylvania called the Sawmill Inn mm. so you know it was classy in so, anytime yes. it's got the word in yeah, on there in with two ends sure you know and uh, <laughs> and uh, that's when I started uh, doing stand-up then. I was probably about 18, 19. And why the stand-up bug at that point? You know what? It was, um, I really wanted to just perform what I was writing. <laughs> is really oh. it, it's one of the things where it was like well, I love when you said uh, I was writing I did not yeah, picture I love, I, I stand up material yeah I love writing stories and I started writing jokes and then I wanted to just basically perform what I was writing and so, so who, who would you have seen on TV that some, something must have inspired in you I want to write jokes it was a lot of the uh, young comedian specials that were on HBO uh -huh. was, um, uh, Seinfeld Sam Kinison like uh, all those guys was sure. really um, you know even guys like uh, um like Barry Martyr and yeah. uh, um, Stephen Barry Wright. Martyr had yeah. uh, the great, uh, one of the only, only, maybe, funny Hitler jokes I ever heard. He said, uh, you know, Hitler got a bum deal with the uh, pastries. Some of the other dictators got their own pastries, Napoleon. <laughs> <laughs> right? You never heard a guy at a coffee shop say, let me get a cup of coffee and a cheese, Hitler. <laughs> Because, you know, Hitler and cancer, these are the two things you can't make jokes yeah. about. He mm -hmm. nailed it. <laughs> well, I, I think that's, what, what Chris said is that's interesting. I think a lot of comics from sort of our era, the 80, late 80s and 90s were the first time where stand-up comedy was wholesale on TV and cable had blown up. I, I got so, the Hot Channel I watched. Yeah. I watched Alan, um, uh, blanking on Avey. Well, a a Alan Havy's up all night, but then also... Um, Want another funny Alan? In inside the Comic Mind. What was that, Alan? Um, inside the Comic Mind, Sam. Alan Funt. I'm, sure. I'm out. Oh, God. Oh, I'm so mad at myself for not knowing Sorry. this. But he had a show inside the Comic Mind, and he would sit down and talk. Like, I remember not being the biggest fan of, like, Dice, but he had a serious conversation about mm. Dice and comedy. I was like, well, this is really interesting, and it was so... Now a young comic just has to listen to podcasts and you can get a fine education, but we all were watching all those shows, MTV's Half Hour Comedy Hour. There were five different Evening at the Improv shows. Yep. And also, even local comics. Like, one of the first comedians I saw at my college was Todd Glass. Is that right? Was, yeah, many years ago. And he was making, I just remember. From Philly, that's from, right. Yeah, from Philly. And he was, he was just pretty much doing crowd work, playing with the audience. He was making fun of somebody's backpack for like 10 minutes, and it was hilarious. <laughs> and, That's uh, the joy of working yeah, colleges. <laughs> you can just make fun of somebody's backpack yeah, for yeah. 10 minutes. <laughs> and uh, the legendary Wid, if you remember him from uh, from Philly, he toured. He was actually a prop comic. But I don't remember the legendary Wid. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. He was another uh, Remember the legendary Wid? I think you'll have better luck finding my Puma ad. Yes. Can, we, <laughs> can we drop the word legendary, maybe? <laughs> I think that's I what's, think, told, that's what's yes. getting in the way. <laughs> I think we've just proven that to be incorrect. The, one, so. the at one time legendary <laughs> Id. But yeah, there were a lot of, uh, I remember just comedians in Philly that, uh, you know, of course, there's Paul Tompkins was there. Sure, certain, of course. And, uh, you know, we, and Patton and Oswald would come up from Baltimore sometimes, and uh, we saw Blaine Capatch, and it was it was kind of a breeding ground for, uh, for new comics, and it was really... Uh, um, it was really uh, a great thing. The, the thing that made it awful was that uh, Philadelphia was one of the first cities out of comedy. Where out. they just, they just all right, we're closing all our clubs. We're not really interested anymore. Oh, wow. So, you know, it's when the comedy club was booming. Philly was one of the first ones. We're out. 70% off. So, yeah. <laughs> and uh, how soon before the train uh, skips the baseball and goes to the comedy 
for you in Chicago? I, w I was a freshman at college at the University of Arizona, and I was... Thanks for wearing the shirt. Ah, they're playing today, number four. Go Cats. Um, and uh, I, yeah, so I had been starting, I had started to watch like high school and into my uh, first semester of my freshman year, all these comedy shows we're talking about. And there was a stand-up comedy competition and Where? on campus called this Doritos Sticklets, a defunct gum company. Um, gum and potato chips, great combination. Ah, together at last. Oh, finally, finally. How else you could get the potato chips out of your teeth yeah. <laughs> so than to throw a piece of gum in there? Sticklets. Collect, collect, collect great branding. It was great branding. Sticklets. Yeah. So as the U.S., there was, they were going There's around. A stick of gum. There's something called chiclets. Uh, I see. We've got to get Doritos in there somewhere. <laughs> We've got, we got to get cheese Doritos yeah. in there somewhere. Who remembers Doritos? Sticklets. You guys are big on the brands. No, I just was. Well, there was a thing on The Simpsons where Homer, or the nuts and gum, were, were together. Nuts and gum, together. another great combo. I used to have uh, that cut with my uh, Crystal Pepsi. That's right. The Dorito. Well, it was. Uh, d d no, let me let me clarify. Please. <laughs> <laughs> There's time for that. There was. There were two separate sponsors. Sticklets was a gum company. And Doritos was obviously Doritos. I think everyone misunderstood. I'm not the only one. <laughs> I was hoping that Doritos had they decided to get in the gum business. That would have been even better. Sadly, that is not the case. <laughs> so the two, two of these companies put together, they sponsored this comedy competition. Yeah. And it, went around, it was called the U.S. College Comedy Competition. So they're going around at campuses all over Holy the country. Holy crap. What year is this? 88. Sure. Um, and the MC was Judd Apatow. If you go to my YouTube page, you'll see the first time I ever did stand-up, and acid wash jeans and a mullet, Judd Apatow introduces me. It's Sweet fantastic. Sweet Jesus on a pie tin. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> that is super fantastic. And you can see me doing stand-up comedy in plaid shorts and flip-flops. Because that made sense. Yes. 18 years old. Yep. And this is the first time you're mentioning this to me now because <laughs> you didn't want to use that footage to get us both in Judd's movies? What's wrong with you? Yeah. All right. Now you know. Make a call. Too late. Get us some work. Um, I think he's still making movies. Ah, I think he's on TV again. Oh. Well, we blew it. But no, that's, so I joined that competition. A couple guys in my dorm were like, we should all join. And we entered the competition and that was it. I, I, that so a couple of guys in your dorm say we should all join, but prior to that, it hadn't crossed your mind? No, it had. It had. Because there was a couple guys, like, there was one guy in the dorm that I became buddies with and we were sort of the funniest guys in the dorm. And, and he had said he did some, he was from back east, and he did some open mic back east, and he goes, and we should do that. So we all started carrying around notepads to do jokes. And then all of a sudden, this competition, there was like a poster for it in the student union, and we went, okay. So there were no comedians necessarily that were inspiring you. Well, just for, aside from just like the ones I grew up watching, like Steve Martin, um, uh, the original cast of Saturday Night Live. I mean, I know that sketch, but like stand-up comics, Richard Pryor, Steve Martin. But you were just a fan. There was never a thought of maybe someday. A little tiny. Kind of, kind of, because like I remember when, when VHS started to become big and there was a, a video store that opened up near my house when I was in high school. I started going there religiously and I learned about Lenny Bruce there. Um, I watched the Dustin Hoffman movie Lenny when I was like, 14 or 15. Arguably the worst way to learn about Lenny, but, <laughs> sure. but sure. And also way past the average that you would have seen a movie like that. Yeah. Already. <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I started to kind of feel like maybe I could do this and was always the kind of class clowny dude. Sure. You know. And the idea of heroin at some point sounded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to OD in a hotel and just like, this is it. <laughs> what a perfect time for a sponsor to drop in. <laughs> <laughs> Sticklets gum, everybody. Yeah. Let's take a moment to, to thank this heroin. <laughs> um, once enrolled in college, Graham decided to major in economics because, again, quoting his very words on the matter, it was because of Michael J. Fox's character in Family Ties. That is absolutely correct. Do you think that would have been a key that maybe show business was in my future? That's why he chose economics. Yeah. Because I was like, I want to be a business guy. Business. And I was like, what's, what's a business degree? And I was like, I don't know. Alex so, P. Keaton. Alex P. Keaton was an economics yeah. major. So I was an econ major for a semester. And he made it look cool. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I thought this, I'll be like Alex P. Keaton. Holy crap. Yeah. 
You picked your major because of Oh, I started Alf? as a, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually started as a mechanical engineer. Sure you did. Yeah. Because yeah. he had to build that spaceship to get back to Melmac. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> nice Alf <laughs> reference. <laughs> there you go. So, yeah, I started as a mechanical engineer, and then about um, two years in, after taking all these physics and calculus classes, I realized, I don't want to do this. Fuck this. And then uh, I transferred into uh, Temple, which had a radio, television, and film program. Sure, that's what we all Two did. of those are still relevant. And, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Two out of three, uh, not bad after all these yeah, years. And everything I did from the calculus to the physics to the chemistry became electives. And, so, and then I finished out the, uh, the program there. Oh, wow. I would just took a moment and a knee to imagine all the people in radio who are... Uh, yelling and screaming that on a podcast we poo-pooed radio as a important medium. Yeah, let's take a moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, let's jump ahead, shall we? Let's talk about this documentary. You guys um, started your own podcast in 10, 11? Late 2009. 2009. Mm -hmm. Around the same time as us, I think we jumped in in... Uh, March. March of 2009. Yeah. yeah little earlier it's not a competition <laughs> yes. um, <clears throat> you guys were fairly successful fairly soon yeah it, we, we got a lot of listeners uh, very quickly and um, one, and we always we started comedy film nerds as a website and then we realized well we should maybe do a podcast that's right. what Graham had said and that's when I went what's a podcast and then we when we tried started we do we did it we started getting a lot of listeners we realized that uh, well now the website is supporting the podcast mm. so that became kind of the center of what right. we were doing yeah. yeah it was well it was it was beneficial in a lot of how it sort of grew quickly was it was that not 2009 2010 when sort of a lot of comedians in LA were doing podcasts so mm -hmm. it started this like hey what's this new thing mm -hmm. Um, so it was Jimmy we Pardo was doing uh, his. he had been doing his for a couple mm -hmm. years and I had been on his as sort of a regular and I started to notice his fans coming up to me on the road right quoting jokes and stuff like that and then um, I started doing Doug Loves Movies which started around 08, 09 mm -hmm. somewhere in there um, and so some of those fans came over and we really was sort of that not a lot of people were doing it not a lot of people were in iTunes so it, and so there wasn't a lot of people to ask for help yeah, when we uh, couldn't oh, get yeah. the tech right or the audio right, <clears throat> and ended up who helped us were the fans. It was like you know you're coming out as mono on one side, so then here's how you fix it. Yeah, we like, hear from those assholes all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Love them to death. Um, and then uh, 2011 is when the idea for the LA podcast. Yeah, festival, uh, Dave, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. 2011, Dave Anthony who had written for Comedy Film Nerds um, and been on our podcast yeah. a couple of times said, hey, what about a podcast festival? And we were like, that's a great idea. And we had just all kind of started to find out about Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. So we kickstarted the first year. Um, and the first year was 2012. It took us about nine months to kind of figure out what it was gonna be and figure out the Kickstarter. And then the Kickstarter funded in like March of 2012, and we did it in October of that year, the first one. There was a great response, because yeah. uh, people really wanted to have the festival. In fact, even some of the sponsors, one of them said, look, if you don't get to your goal, we'll put in the rest of the money. We want this to happen. Fantastic. So. And it's, it's only <clears throat> gotten bigger and bigger every year. Mm -hmm. This is our sixth year. <clears throat> yep. We're going to announce uh, the new dates and venue, and, venue. and tickets are going on sale February 15th. Mm -hmm. We're days away we from are. the big announcement. Mm -hmm. But nothing you want to mention now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, clearly decisions have already been made. You know what the dates are. Yeah. yeah you just... could tease something. <laughs> they're 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 coming in the fall. Uh -huh. yes. uh, the shows are go. in the fall. The festivals in the fall. fall yeah. Festivals in the fall. <clears throat> so we should keep that in mind. I would. I would pay attention to LAPodfest.com dot com mm -hmm. right around February fifteenth. The middle of the month. Yeah. You're saying the in Ides the of February. The Ides of February. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, bam. Uh, <laughs> speaking of Kickstarter, I, I, I gave a little. Yes, sir. Yes. We appreciate it. Well, that's not why I mentioned it. Yeah. <laughs> I, now that it, the movie's out, I, I, is there a way to get that back, that money? <laughs> I, uh, I mean, I, like in I cash form. I can't. I am a little tight. Isn't that how it worked? Yeah, yeah. Help you, you kickstart and then. Yeah. yeah. No, that, that means you're in Is that why this came up? Yeah, exactly. Is that why this was delivered? <laughs> 
Yeah, that's exactly why. You, you guys it. raised a lot for this. We did, and it wasn't enough. So. <laughs> <laughs> the number they came up in the research is 140K. Yeah, that's 140K, correct. and then we, um, we've been slowly putting more money in to get it finished, but it is now uh, done. Yeah. And it's available in all the places you watch a movie? So, almost. Well, right now, the, you can get downloads and DVDs exclusively at ComedyFilmers.com. Okay. We're in the middle of a distribution negotiation, Dang. so it'll be on iTunes and Amazon and that, all that stuff soon. Soon? That's pretty damn exciting. Most likely after February 15th. <laughs> so. <laughs> that, I see what that, you did there. Yeah, yeah. It's in that range. We're not sure yet. But like, but it will be on those other places. Yeah, and we sell earbuds, t-shirts, and everything at ComedyFilmers.com. Mm -hmm. So it's like completely supporting. It's the fans funded it. The whole podcast community got behind. Like you, you're a podcaster. Everybody got behind it. Right. Chris and I were guests on 30-some podcasts yeah. during the Kickstarter campaign. And that helped. But the, the yeah. support was amazing. I mean, it wasn't, that, that's what Graham is saying. It's like not, not just the fans supported it, but the actual other podcasters like you, Aisha Tyler, uh, Doug Benson. It was a great just groundswell of support from the whole community. Sure. Which was really Sponsors fantastic. helped yeah, out. Sponsors helped out too. It was great. So, um, but the amount of time you guys put into it. Yeah, it's been. Is it a year and a half? Is it? Oh, no, it's no, more. It's, well, it's. it's it, it was three years ago that the Kickstarter... From start to finish, it's probably going to be about three. It's three I mean, years. For, and, you know, we talked to other documentary makers, like, three, that's not bad. The yeah, first doc see, I did took me four. <laughs> yeah. We, I yeah. mean, you did your doc. I mean, it's it always takes longer and costs well, more Well, I edited paid. for ten months, and I would mm -hmm. still be cutting now if someone hadn't said, we need to submit this to Sundance. Right. So you need to stop. I think that's what happens with low-budget documentaries. I think yeah. you just... Is it talking heads mostly? Yeah, and then we, we go a lot of, tr we do, tr we travel. We go all over the U.S. We go to Australia, Japan. We meet fans. We see their connection. Like, um, and we hear a lot of, we did a lot of fan interviews where we just like, at like Zany's in Chicago and the improv clubs all over and even in Australia. Right. And we told fans, just come by and tell us your story. And this, a lot of people came by and said, hey, it got me through this tough time. I was suffering from mental illness or someone passed away or whatever. And listening to your guys' shows helped me get through that. We so that really, you know, that's the thing about a documentary is you know you kind of go in with a an idea what it's going to be like, but then really the interviews mm -hmm. tell you where it's actually going to go. Yeah. And one of the things we wanted to do to make a documentary about podcasts, we're not like, all right, we're not going to make a documentary that tells you about podcasting, what it is, and the history of it. What we wanted to dig into was the unique personal connection between the podcaster and the mm -hmm. fans. That's really what the movie's about, and that's really what the story is. And it's also partially our story when we went to Australia and Japan and met our fans there, and it was an amazing experience just to see that, that connection. We well, yeah, talking to fans in Japan who were like, when the, the tsunami and earthquake hit there, and how like the podcast community got behind them online like hey are you okay right to this you know, one fan in particular and then another guy was like uh, you know i had to walk eight hours to get home to my family and i was freaking out so i listened to a bunch of your shows like to hear these stories and you're just like really just us just making about funnies movies. about yeah. movies and this it is matters? a perfect example to you podcasters out there while during your podcast you should never complain about anything because there's a chance that someone's listening to that podcast during a eight hour walk back to their family and you're complaining about the parking uh, <laughs> during your stupid podcast. Seriously, That's right where my true. thought goes when yes. I hear about someone walking for eight right. hours listening yeah. to funny people talk yeah. about their miserable lives. And yeah. they you know, couldn't, couldn't get onto a phone, they, there was, everything was down, yeah. so literally yeah. there was no communication. And the other thing that was so amazing and, and uh, you know, I. A lot of us comedians, yourself included, we've done a lot of traditional media yeah. and never had the fan reaction like this. Like the emails that I'm sure you've gotten, like pouring oh, yeah. the heart out. I, I, yeah. you know, I never got this from nope. doing, from doing a stand up set or you know, after TV a show. No, or, no. Yeah, never, it's, never. It's the connection. Never. Like I said, we, that's why we wanted to make the movie about that. It's a connection that doesn't exist in any other media. Right. Um, I don't have a choice. I got to go back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> They're uh, saying not getting info in the earpiece. <laughs> well, they just said go back. To the <laughs> oh. 
Uh, Graham, do you still prefer what you called a boo-type scary film over what you also called a cat jumping out and going meow? Oh, yeah, I, I, the, the cat jump, I hate cheap scares. That's what I call those. I think Jamie is down jump with that. Scares. Jump scares. Jump, jump yeah. scares? Sure. Mm -hmm. Where you're just like, they're walking and then like a bird, and go, oh, it's just like, give me, I, I prefer the sort of creepy environment. Tension. Tension, yeah. where you're like, this is creepy. Yeah. And something is just, uh, Yeah, when they finally get to that house in Blair Witch and the guy's facing the wall in the corner and the yes. camera just moves past it, what the fuck was that? Yeah, yeah. that's what I want from my right. scares, sure. Versus just like a creepiness a, that just kind of unsettles you and kind of stays with you for a while. By the way, it turns out it was a sound guy. I'm right. sorry. I'm sorry. We need to go back. Are you a fan of the Blair Witch Project? I saw it before anyone said a word about it. I just okay. literally went to see it knowing nothing. Huh? So I couldn't be more of a fan because I saw it in a perfect environment. Very well. Mm. To the point where I believe, Jesus, someone found footage. I mean, it was that experience. Wow. Yes. Yes, wow. And that was part of the marketing thing, too. I but think. it was... It was genius. If they caught, if you got caught in that moment, right. which probably lasted a day. Right. Or nine <laughs> days. You know, because people immediately went on the street and said, you've got to... You know, yeah, yeah. And then it was, you're mm -hmm. fucked. Mm -hmm. um, the found footage thing. Uh, Chris, when you saw The Blair Witch, did you also, quote... Jump out of my seat so much that my knees kept hitting the seat in front of me. I had bruises on my knees afterwards and was limping around for a week. Because that's what Graham said. <laughs> that is a lie. I cannot <laughs> confirm or... Um, I, I really liked the movie when I saw it. And I was still kind of in that same range that you were. Where, where it was like, oh, okay. It was just starting to come out. Well, it's not really real footage. Right. But it's still creepy. And well the made. shooting style is well made. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it was one of those movies, too, like just that scene at the end. It was unsettling and it stayed with me for a few days. Like, you know, if a horror movie makes you keep thinking about it a couple days later, it's an effective horror movie. Exactly. So I really liked it. And uh, I like movies like that that are kind of smarter and do different things. Like, I liked the original Paranormal Activity, too, because it's for what you don't see is scarier than what you do see a lot of times. Right. And when you guys started doing the comedy film, was the idea of the website first, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. to go see a lot of movies and review them and share your insights? Yes. Well, yeah, and in I a sense, be critics? Well, yeah. I, yeah, it was kind of like... And have a staff of writers, too. It was like mm -hmm. a, we, we were comedians writing sort of funny movie reviews, and I think our approach was not to just be like traditional critics, but sort of, I think it was a lot of it was born out of, you know, comedians on the road, you got a lot of time to kill during the day, so you see movies, and then you sit in the green room and talk about them. More, right. more that environment versus like a traditional film critic. Absolutely. And and also... We had a, we had both had film backgrounds, too. So we thought, well, what better way to mix it is mm -hmm. we're funny, where we know, actually know something about film. And that was always the voice of the site, was funny, but also informative. Like right. an informative uh, critique, but also funny. Yeah. And... At some point, it has to become a sense of assignment, right? Uh, you love going to the movies, clearly. But at some point, when you devote this much time to the website and the podcast, now it's a job. Yeah, I, I mean, mean one of the things I noticed about doing this it's was... It's a job. Oh, so I never stop booking this show? Ever? Ever. Yeah. Ever. <laughs> and when I meet someone famous, that's all I'm thinking? Right. How am I going to get them on the chat show? <laughs> I'm that asshole now? Yes. Forever more? <laughs> How does that fucking work? I know. It never ends. You always have to be pro promoting, pro posting new content. Yeah. yeah. And then, but it does provide every now and then for that great moment of someone whose work you admire and you, you, you figure out a way to mention mm -hmm. it and they go, oh yeah, I'm a fan of the show. Yeah, I'd love to come on. Kev, I, uh, we just got an update from some of the Syrian refugees who've been listening to the podcast. <laughs> Their hearts are broken that it's so hard to book. <laughs> I'm, oh, wow. I'm, so, so, I'm sorry, did I make a point and then... <laughs> did I walk a mile in those shoes immediately? Is that what I'm doing now? Just a little bit. Yeah. Do we care what foreigners think? I mean, yeah, come on. Come on. Let's, make, let's make it great Come again. on, build the wall. Yeah. Build they can't wall. even get in Make anymore. your own podcasts. Oh, yeah, that's what I my. Say. They can come in through Seattle for yes. a while. Um, I'll tell you the one thing yeah. is uh, when it, it affects us the most is when 
we have to go to the movies because you know we have to see something every week and there's nothing it's we want to see and we have to pick something and um, the flip side of that is that when we see a movie because we see so many movies that really affects us that we really enjoy we enjoy it all the more because it sure. surprises us sure really I've, I've started to have fun with that 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 the first part of what he said of, of like okay well this movie's going to be bad I'm going in knowing it's going to be bad and I can't wait to just make fun of it right do you find Scramsey split I saw Resident Evil yeah so that's you know so we got to split them up if there's a way to lower your expectations you have a better chance of actually enjoying the movie. The best way to do that is to go to these new food movie theaters where you sit in a comfortable chair and they bring you food and that'll make the dumbest movie fine. Except for Passengers. <laughs> oh. <laughs> See, our experience on Passengers, I'll speak for myself, no, my experience on it, Passengers. The same, was, it was so low. Or low everyone, like everyone's like, it's not good, it's not good, it's not good. And then I was like, I It was like bombing it. historically yeah. and how are these two giant movie stars not opening this and film? I like a good robot. Exit polls yeah. being horrible, and we ended up enjoying the damn thing. But for you, not so much. Not so much. We I've had that a happen. Spoiler I've I've had that happen where I've watched it later after weeks of oh my mm -hmm. god this sucks, and I went. But that's what's that's everyone's good. problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah it, it works both ways too. It's like oh you got to see this movie. It's fantastic. That, and it's then amazing. that happened to me and with La like, La no. Land. I was like it like, was no, okay. It's okay. It happened yeah. to a yeah. lot. Most people with La La Land. Yeah. So like, There's such a buildup. Yeah. There's no way around that. happened with like Slumdog Millionaire for me. I saw it late after everyone said it's like one of the most amazing movies ever. Forget it. And then it's like, no, no chance. Like, yeah. Well, okay. he hates uh, refugees. I mean, like, <laughs> <they> just, uh, <laughs> and, and game shows. The, the worst yeah. of game shows. And Millionaire. Oh, yes. God. They're all dead. Not a big Anil Kapoor fan, I guess. Yes. <laughs> uh, I don't know what I'm saying. This is mentioned somewhere in Graham's oh, mini, mini uh, bio. Honed I should have brought a goddamn lawyer to this. <laughs> <laughs> Honed his skills in comedy clubs to become a sarcastic hipster. Why would that be written? Who, I don't know. I didn't write that. Why? Somebody wrote that. I wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> That's like Part a of a comedy group called Fancy Ketchup. Uh, we're getting old bios from the 90s. That's how this <laughs> we're doing? That's what we're doing? Okay. In addition to his love of baseball, his interests in, are in, uh, in sports include martial arts and weapons. Why and weapons? What does that mean? Well, specifically martial arts weapons. Right. Yes. Yeah. Martial Aha, arts weapons. Martial arts and weapons. And weapons. Gotcha. Like uh, what? I'd go nunchucks. Sure you do. Chaco sticks. I'm sure Sam knows about Damn those. Damn right. Ninja stars. Yeah, they're tasty. Like, Chaco sticks. Chaco <laughs> sticks. <laughs> the finest one. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm proficient in the sai, in the bow, and yeah. in the katana. Ooh, which is almost got all the Ninja Turtle in weapons in yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well, let's see. Donatello had yeah. a bow. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh. <laughs> uh, when asked... What role would you most like to see yourself inhabit in a horror movie? Graham said unapologetically, I'd like to play a werewolf, adding somebody who had a secret demon inside of them. Chris? I agree. <laughs> so, I think Graham would like Finally, we found yes. something in common with you so, two. Mm. Well, why are you guys doing I a podcast? <laughs> Uh, so I I think I'd like to be a ghost that once a year can take human form. Once a year. Yeah. So the purge in reverse. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Mancini reverse purge. <laughs> <laughs> Sammy reverse binge. ghost. Huh? A reverse purge would be a binge. I'm gonna get out of here, guys. <laughs> 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 Sammy, what uh, what horror uh, monster creature uh, famous character? I would also go Wolfman, but just because I hate shaving. Gotcha. <laughs> Got it. Makes save time. Two mm -hmm. on the nose. Yep. Mm -hmm. Jamie, last chance. My immediate thought was ghost. I, don't, I was always been fascinated by ghosts, and I just like the the idea of like you know being invisible and fucking with people. Library ghost. Um. No, traditional house. Uh, traditional, traditional house. house. I'm gonna change my answer. <laughs> I'm gonna go Dracula because I sleep all day anyway. <laughs> Boom. With so you, you went with the with two that are already happening. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, Graham, your first documentary you mentioned occurred after at least seven comedy tours in war zones around the world. Well, the documentary was about the first time I went to Afghanistan. Right. I've, gone, I've gone and done comedy tours in seven times in war zones, but the documentary was about the first time I went right. to Afghanistan. And at what point during that journey did you start to think, I need to share this story? You know? it, was bef it was 
before I went, uh, a comedian, uh, Mike Burton, came to me at the Hollywood Improv, and this was the summer of 04, and he was like, I've just started sending comics over to Afghanistan. He was telling me all these crazy stories. I was like, wow. And then he goes, I need a guy next month. And I was like, uh, let me think about it. He goes, you got 24 hours, because the, de the Department of Defense, I need you know X amount of weeks to clear you and all this stuff. So the next day I was meeting with a good friend of mine, Tim Bennett, who's also like a writing partner. And we were working on this other script and I told him about it, he goes, oh, you gotta go. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity. He goes, and bring a camera. Who knows what you'll see? Maybe we'll make a doc out of it. Mm, wow. So I was like, okay. So, um, and I also had my, my brothers and sisters were, were just starting to have kids. So I had at that point maybe three nieces or nephews. I have six now, maybe three or four. Um, and I was like, well, I want, they were little kids. I was like, I want them when they grow up to see what this, they were all sort of born right around 9-11. Wow. And so I was like, I want them to kind of see what this is like. And I wanted to show people what being in a war zone was like through my eyes. Cause the only way you're gonna see it is either you're in the military or you're watching it on the news. And, and, and was it during that trip that there was a 45 plus minute air attack while you were in a helicopter the second trip i went in 06 uh we were in a we, yeah we were in a firefight we did it i was with shay matosh and we had done a show in uh, a base primarily of marines near jalalabad um and uh we had we're just it was about to be a 30 minute flight from jalalabad back to bagram which is the main base and then it ended up being an hour and a half because we got in this firefight and then so like the gunner who was maybe from me to you uh, had a 60 caliber machine gun and he's just sort of opening up and I'm just sitting there like strapped in. Getting hit by. Spent shells were, were literally popping off my face. And I was just like, and they were on the ground like, you know, peanut shells at a sports bar or something. And, uh, you know, we banked to this side. So I was on the right side and Shaman was on the left side. Then we banked up that way while her gunner unloaded on someone. We released countermeasures. I saw... I saw these flares and I was like, God, what were those flares? And then later, like weeks later, someone was like, oh no, no, that's when you're targeted by a missile. They release flares to distract the missile. And I was like, oh, I almost got blown out of the sky. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that was that trip. The second one was... That's the second trip and you went back at least five more times. Yep. Yep. Let's talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> Why not just enlist at that point? <laughs> <laughs> I should have. I would have actually made money. Um, <laughs> there we have it. Uh, yeah, it was. Freedom costs a buck oh five. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's not free. Nope. It, it was. Uh, I, I felt. I think after nine eleven made me. I, I felt like a lot of Americans like. I need to help more. I need to participate sure. more. So I became like a volunteer for the American Red Cross and that was pretty cool and fulfilling and I learned a lot and then this opportunity to go over there and I kept getting asked to go back and I just felt like I, I wasn't married, I didn't have kids, so there was no like, you know, if I had kids it might have been like, oh, I don't know, but I was like, I'm gonna go, like I can do this. Are you creating an out for Chris? <laughs> no. Is that what's happening it's, right it, now? It's real. Well, it's yeah. a real out. Like, <laughs> really? <laughs> I, I always, I mean, I told a lot of comments. It, it was a short conversation with my wife. It was because I was thinking about going when Scott Kennedy had passed away. He booked a bunch in Iraq. And she, you're not going. And then that's because yeah, I had kids and it was, right. we talked about it and it was a no-go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and it was also because of that and because of, you know, in a country of 300 million people, I mean, how many actual professional working comics are there? A thousand? I mean, I don't know, but it's not a lot. And then of that number, who are willing to go into a war zone, have the type of act that would work? Sure. It's a hundred. I mean, it's less than a hundred people. And I was one of them. So it was like, well, I, I almost felt like I had to. And then there's guys like Chris said, Scott Kennedy, who set up, started to set up his own tours. Scott went over there like 50 sometimes. Mm. He was going almost once a month. And his whole goal was, let's go to the small bases. The big bases get entertainment and that's fine, but we were going to these little bases where 100 people total. Wow. We do shows in a room smaller than this with 10, 15 guys. No microphones sometimes. And those were the most, some of the most rewarding shows I've ever done in my entire life. And we do three or four of those in a day. So you kind of just felt, and then you heard stuff like, you know, Scott, one time we, 
we were supposed to go to a base and there were two guys got and died at the base. They were killed in action in a firefight the night before, so the show was canceled, obviously. And I remember feeling like, God, I feel like, I, I was like, I said to him, like, I feel like an idiot. I'm just some birthday clown. These guys are putting it all on the line. Their families are getting the worst news. And Scott said, Grandma, I had a commanding officer tell me that every time the comedy shows came through the bases, the suicide rate dropped. So he said, we have a mission and I'll get us more shows and I will go back to those bases in six months, but this is our job. Like that was his approach. It wasn't just like, oh, I'll do these shows and post it on social media and won't this be cool. He was like, I'm, he had a nephew that was in the Marines. Mm. So he felt very, uh, felt this obligation. When he said that to me, I was sort of like, oh, okay. Quit fucking belly aching about it, you dumb sure. comic, and go do your goddamn job. And, and Probably so, the first time you heard suicide rate in regard to... Stand-up comedy. I mean, like, and, and also, that's the other thing. Like, anytime you saw the statistics coming out of Iraq and Afghanistan and be a non-combat death, mm. most of those were suicides. Also true of Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> and your documentary, you go into a lot of that, too. Like, you, you see Graham, it's almost Graham's, like, heart of darkness journey where he breaks down, puts himself back together, and you see, uh, the thing I really liked about Afghanistan is there's very little stand-up in it. Afghanistan, really, that's the name of the documentary. Yes, it's really, it's his journey going over there and coming back changed. Yeah. And where, where can they find that, Graham? I think that's at ComedyFilmers.com mm -hmm. too, Chris. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, so people should really spend a lot so of time. So dial in to Comedy yeah. Yeah. Dial, dial it's yeah, don't change it. <laughs> change, <laughs> dial it into CFN. If you have an iPad, you could dial it in this way. Pry yourself away from Friendster for just a minute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got some email from MySpace, by the way, a couple weeks ago. What, what is that? Oh, How is no. that still a thing? Sent from beyond the grave. I wow. never, uh, <laughs> I never removed uh, myself. It's like an is amusement park. Is it still a ghost town they kind miss of thing? You. Yeah. But I mean, is it it's an abandoned mall sure. from your youth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's um, haunted. There's yeah. zombies. <laughs> Gem <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, I can't wait uh, to watch Earbuds, the podcasting documentary. Thank you very much for that. So now since you're that. a producer, if you have any notes, let us know. <laughs> yes, so. I do have notes. <laughs> Um, Sam hasn't seen it. He already has notes. Yeah. That's right. I have some notes. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Um, Never should have brought we it. We can't wait to, to get the, uh, the news uh, of uh, 2017's LA Podcast Festival, which will be in the fall at some point. We look forward, as a chat show, of, of participating. You guys were in last year. It was great. We uh, yeah, enjoyed great ourselves there very, very mm -hmm. much. Um, as I threatened both of you <laughs> early on, I think, to continue the tradition. We've had uh, two guests before. I remember Paul Shear and uh, Rob Hubel mm -hmm. had to sit there uncomfortably and watch the other one do their Larry King game. So you will do them separately, not a competition in any way, shape, or form. We're gonna go ahead and lower expectations as we were talking about <laughs> earlier and the effect that that could have. Let's go over the rules again. It's that moment where Larry would go to the phones, but before going to the phones, he would stare down the barrel of the camera and share something about himself that nobody wanted to know. And I mean nobody. So I want a bad Larry King impression because a good one doesn't interest me. I want a bad one. <laughs> bad one is funny. Done. Yeah. <laughs> and takes the pressure off. And then as Larry shares something about Larry into the camera, and then go to the phone, if the name of the city you go to is funny sounding, it won't hurt. <laughs> Chris, are you ready? You're up first. All right. There's your camera. When you're ready, have a go. Hi, this is Larry King, <laughs> and I just want you to know I like to watch really racist cartoons. <laughs> you know, the old black and white ones with the firecracker. <laughs> Rochester, I'll see you soon. <laughs> that is very. He didn't. He didn't go to the phones. He plugged an upcoming appearance in Russia. Wow, that was spectacular. That was fantastic. <laughs> Good God, y'all. I was. That was. Good luck to you, sir. Oh God, I don't have anything planned. No, I no. don't know what I'm doing. That was improvised, as is this. Uh. <laughs> Good. When you're ready, take your time, and then begin. Um.
Hi, this is Larry King, and I want to welcome you to the show. Before we take our next caller, I want to say that if you're traveling through Europe with small children, go to Dachau. Changed my life. <laughs> <laughs> Southampton, you're on the phone. <laughs> he brought it home! <laughs> Uh, ComedyFilmNerds.com That's where you go to get everything you need to know uh, Chris and Graham, thank you both so very, very much Thank you uh, For making time for us today uh, Folks will get a chance to see this wonderful documentary And uh, come out to LA Podcast Festival in the fall Go to Comedy Film Nerds uh, mid-February to find out all those dates and uh, LA Podfest.com. LA Podfest.com. It has their own, yes. of course, idiots. Yes. But you'll have a link. We'll have a link right. and, and we'll Comedy announce Film it Nerds. on Comedy Film Nerds yes. podcast. Great. It'll all be there. Great. Uh, thank you both very much. Thanks, Bob. Uh, Thanks. Please sit there uncomfortably while I wrap things up for the folks at home. Sounds good. Fantastic. <laughs> thank you. There is the sitting uncomfortable face. <laughs> Sammy and Jamie, thank you both. Sure. As always. Uh, a real delight on a Saturday afternoon. I only made like three Simpsons references. It wasn't that was that's low for me. We have the over under at seven, so we I hope a lot of people <laughs> bet the under. We made a few to each other that are probably on my mic. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, good, good, good. So, if you, could, so uh, you know, if you can hear those and then write them in, and I'll send you a Tootsie Pop or something. Yeah, r r write to us, please, at kpcsfanmail <laughs> at gmail.com. Thanks to Mike Duman, Rune Kincaid, Kenny Chen. Uh, Megan, who has the last name, I'm sure I know. <laughs> Williams, how hard Williams. difficult is that? What the fuck Megan is the matter Williams. with me? It's the easiest of all last names. You've got Smith, Jones, Williams. Um, all my and J-Mac, I believe, was, uh, I was here in spirit when he was <laughs> not here <laughs> physically. He's here now. He's there physically. No, he's right there. Um, that's all the time we have for today. Uh, a lot of upcoming shows, as I mentioned at the top of the show, go, go follow... Uh, at Kevin Pollack, at Sam Levine, two That's M's, true. no waiting. Thanks, bro. <laughs> and Jamie wants nothing to do with Twitter. All right. <laughs> Until next time, and as always, Brian, everyone's favorite <laughs> intern. Get out of my face.